Hi everybody, I'm here today to introduce you to one of my longest friends on YouTube I've had. Um, her name's Caroline Boivin. Caroline uh, Boivin. Boivin. <laughs> Caroline Boivin. Is that right? Right. Yeah. Uh, we've been friends on YouTube for a long time since I even started coming on YouTube. We started chatting on and on. Um, Caroline actually motivated me to produce my YouTube channel in the first place. Um, and we've kind of been in touch ever since, really, on and off. She's a lovely lady, and uh, she's been through some amazing story, uh, times. And she's got a story to tell, and uh, we're going to tell you that story today. Okay. So, hello, Caroline. How are hey. you doing, then? I'm doing okay, David. How about you? you? I'm doing very well. Doing very well. I've been looking forward to this. Me too. Good to see you. <laughs> and it's lovely to see you in your home. Yes, to be in my home, in my place. It's that it was a bit scary because I've been homeless twice. And the first time I was homeless for four months, this time it went up to seven months. And the last three months, I spent three months straight up in my car 24-7. And then the cold weather was coming up and I started I needed to warm up my car every night and uh, that was uh, a, a tough time <laughs> I bet it was I'm so relieved that you've got finally got your place when you did because the temperatures have really gone down over there now haven't they yeah nowadays so. it goes uh, minus well, we, we've been having two days of quite nice temperature above zero, but we are uh, under zero degrees most of the time now, and it's going to get worse as we're going to go into January, February, March. Those not are the time the, to be, yeah, not the time to be camping out in Canada in a car, I can imagine. No, 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 there's no well, unless, unless you enjoy the cold, cold temperature. You know, or if you yeah. want to practice for going into the Arctic or stuff like that, <laughs> but without proper equipment, you can't do that in a car or a trailer or you know. Yeah. That's, it's that's not. It's not good. No. So it's lovely to see you in your place at last. Thank and that's you. what we're here for, isn't it? To tell you your tell your story about what what happened to you. Now I've got basically I do have a question for you. If we're, to start the ball rolling. Um, now, I know you've been on your spiritual journey, as we could put it, for a long time, haven't you? Is it 22 years, you would say, roughly, you've been on your spiritual journey? Um, um, yeah, it would, bah, more than that, it started to, um, I was mm, 20 years old, and I'm 47, so that's quite the... Uh, but a long time but really that's when if i look back that's when my spiritual journey started but for me to be aware of my spiritual journey mm -hmm. it really like a lot of people it started in 2012 uh, 2012 it started with uh in, in November 21st, 2012, and um, it was literally one month before my birthday, and everybody was going nuts about the Mayan calendar on YouTube. 
was the, one that. night I, I was bored and I decided to go on YouTube and and then I saw that everybody was going nuts and yeah. I'm like hell no it can't be the end of the world on December 21st that's my birthday I have my tickets to go show <laughs> see a show with my brother ain't yeah. happening so but that's how it started you know and mm -hmm. and it just kept on going oh, would you say um, that in recent times um, how do I put it did you at some point in that time become aware that in our journeys we're tested and that we have to perceive that we are being tested to move on yeah you keep getting given the same test over and over and over again until you're like, like until you do it here. right that's yeah. exactly how i felt for becoming homeless a second time because mm -hmm. the first time it was chaotic truly chaotic i didn't know what to do i was living in the fear even though with patrick uh we did uh, talking with the planet and we got a lot of information there um it doesn't matter uh, I, at the end of every show patrick would say Lo live in the love live in the now do not fear yeah. and the first time I became homeless, I was full of fear of all kinds. The second time, I was not as much uh, in the fear mode because I knew my resources, I knew where to go, I knew what to do, and mm -hmm. you know. You had that experience behind you, so you, yeah. that initial fear wasn't there. That's right. Yeah. So, but even if I knew all that, still there were moments where I would fear, still, yeah. like winter coming closer and me still being in my car and, you know, and then uh, at one point there were uh, the worker here in my town that went on strike the city yeah. worker of of all kind it's, it's a union and they yeah. have a uh, worker it that that union is kind of specialized into the govern, government worker yeah. and when the worker of uh, the program I was put on which was a subsidy rent yeah uh, when they went on strike, then I was not allowed anymore to look for an apartment because I couldn't get an inspection done. Right. But nonetheless, every apartment I went to visit with my peer support prior to this, yeah. all the apartments I have visited weren't as good as what I have here. This compared to all that I have visited is a palace, literally a palace. Yeah. This apartment came to me through uh, the organization ART, which is another program that helped people to find a place to live, an uh, affordable place to live. That uh, This apartment is uh, subsidized already through yeah. NB housing. So... <clears throat> It, it happened on, in a way that I didn't think would be possible to because the worker were already on strike. Yeah. So what I did find out was that the paperwork for this apartment, for me to have it, was done and prepared before they went on strike officially. Excellent. So here I am. That's great. M moving in here was something else <laughs> it's like i had to move all of my stuff i'm at the last floor i have nobody on top of me <laughs> and it's i'm away from the the main door so less mm -hmm. circulation you know that's good that's good and and 
this is the best apartment I ever had in my entire life, to be honest. You know. That's brilliant. And am I right in thinking that you said that it's guaranteed to be safe now, so you, you you're not gonna have the same thing happen again? No, because for as long as I'm here, it's covered by NB housing. That's brilliant. Yeah. So, so you're safe now. I'm safe and Excellent. unless I get evicted, I need to be really a bad neighbor not pay mm -hmm. my rent or anything like that you know i need to do yeah. something really really bad to get evicted i can't but, see you doing anything like that <laughs> but no no because um i'm conscious uh, i try to see that that's why i wanted to do this with you because when i was in my car it was you know <laughs> obvious to me that i needed to live in the now in the love and keep rising up my frequency and have compassion with others and yeah. and it's when you are thrown out your comfort zone that's when you kick in and you have no yeah. choice but to practice living in the now and yeah. when you're uh, back in your comfort zone it's easy to get back in the old habit. So um, at the moment, like there is some little things that annoy me, right? Like yeah. I call them dump diver. There is people yeah. around the city that goes in, in the bin, garbage bin. Yeah. And they, they sort through your garbage and sometimes, you know, they just get stuff out and they don't put it back and yeah. uh, that annoy me when the stuff gets stuck under my car right that's when I need to to practice compassion for others and uh, I when uh, the first time it truly happened to me like we may think of compassion but to apply it, what does it look like? What does it mean? And the best example I have is that when I was homeless, I had a spot where I had access to internet and I had access to an electric plug where I could plug my laptop and keep it charged and charge my phone also. And yeah. It was safe because there were a camera surveillance mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, a lot well quite a few homeless people knew about that spot and you yeah. know I had my extension cord that I would bring all the way to my car so I would be only using one plug and leave yeah. the other plug for other people and it worked well for a while until the day of when two men came and they decided to gather all their stuff right there and that's by an emergency exit door yeah. and uh, it took a little while but they stayed there for two weeks and after that the electric plug was not working anymore the internet was not working anymore and we, we weren't allowed to I was not allowed to park there anymore but even to be safe with the camera you know surveillance just yeah. in case something happened and um, at the beginning I was really upset at them and then I was thinking okay live in the now raise your frequency what can I do how can I change my perception of the situation. I, I was resentful to these two guys that ruined it for everybody, not just me, yeah. but for everybody who needed it. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> these two guys, they were, you know, it's easy to judge when you don't know. Yeah. So, I kind of felt myself like a mediator, like if I was looking at two perspectives, two different point of view. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I get out myself and I look at my perspective and I'm like, okay, I comprehend, you know, your point mm. of view. Yeah. And then I, as a mediator, I looked at their perspective and, you know, from my judgment to them, judging them for doing drugs and all, um, I was thinking, you know, at first when I cut myself judging them, I was thinking they're probably homeless because they were doing drugs, they're probably troublemaker and all this and that, and um, yeah. that's when I started working on myself really, really hard about that uh, situation, and then yeah. I don't know how I came to that, but f from a mediative perspective, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I was not inventing answer from them. I was looking at my perspective as a mediator. Yeah. It's like, well, maybe they became drug addict because they became homeless. Because I became homeless, I was not a, a drug addict, I was not a troublemaker, I was a caregiver, you know, it yeah. just yeah. happened like that. It's like, yeah. there is so many people that become homeless for so many reasons, it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean that's because you are a troublemaker, Yeah. right? So, it helped me to make peace with the situation and get rid of the resentment, you yeah. know, that I was holding against them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, from those two perspective, I can't pick side. I can't even pick my own side. Yeah. Because they both have the needs. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, it's, it is what it is. One did cause harm and the other didn't. But I, I, I can't judge the one that did cause harm because I don't know. That's the point. I don't yeah. know. Exactly. And to be honest, I was not going <laughs> to look and try to find out. But it, it certainly did help me with the resentment that when something is triggering that's mm -hmm. and that's the main thing you know when you're outside of your comfort zone and you know you work on yourself it yeah. goes smooth and you are in it and you are capable of expressing it when yeah. you're back in your comfort zone like i am right now uh, it's like okay <laughs> It's easy to step back in the old ways and, yeah. you know, yeah, totally. and start over judging people and stuff like that. And I, I need to, you know, step back. And of course, I, there is things that trigger me all the time. Yeah. Not all the time. Must, less often than it used to. Yeah. I'm getting better at it because I discovered during those seven months the power of cho choosing how I feel. Spot on, yeah. So my emotion are my responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. nobody can decide if I'm happy. Nobody can decide if I'm sad. Yeah. So nobody can give you like ten pounds worth of happy or sad, can they? It's what's internal to you. It, I I choose. Like I'm very happy to do this with you today, right? And yeah. having this conversation, and and it's my choice, you know, yeah. to choose to be happy and to give it my best. And in other, I remember in my young, in my youth, I was 18 years old, I was doing in a, a, a program which was called 
positive formation I'm trying to translate from French. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was good. So yeah, it, it was, you know, like a positive training. It, it has yeah. the, I think, uh, 12 session, uh, 12 weeks. And um, the last session, we had to stand up in front of everybody and talk about ourselves. Well, that's nerve wracking at that age. <laughs> and I was so anxious about that. I was concerned about. I, for, for, to begin with, I had no clue about myself. I didn't know mm. what I liked. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know where I wanted to go. Yeah. You know? So I was trying to write a text and build up a text and. It was not working. It was not me, and and I ended up with the worst migraine ever. Well, oh, yeah. Just before to go to the that thing, so I got there and I got so noxious. I had to go to the bathroom, yeah. and I, you know, I threw up, and and then the 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 teacher came to see me. Mm -hmm. Not in the bathroom, but at the door. And um, yeah. he explained to me, he said, you know, it's okay if you don't have anything to say. Just come up to the stage and say, yeah. you don't have nothing to say. So I'm like, well, okay. That's nice of them. Take you the know, pressure off. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to practice humility, <laughs> if yeah. anything. So... Yeah. I came on the stage and that's exactly what I did. I said that uh, I realized I don't know myself at all and I don't know what I want and I don't know what I like and yeah. I have nothing to talk about. <laughs> and everybody stood up, stand up and they applauded me, which they didn't do with any other presentation when they applauded but you know this one yeah. is, was like the mega because one so I'm like oh boy what's that <laughs> you had the guts to go up and say what they were all thinking I expect didn't you probably probably but you know it has it had an impact on them that much but bye bye my my headache my headache was gone so see by choosing to feel uh, anxious about that that yeah. thing I have built up energy that did cause me a migraine to the point to to be sick in the bathroom and as yeah. soon as I stand up in my truth my migraine was gone yeah. and the response from my environment was even greater and impressive yeah. to me now i i comprehend that a little more now standing in your truth is not always easy you know i remember that there is an apartment i went to visit with my peer support and um the landlord was willing to rent to me the apartment. I could have had the apartment straight up. Yep. But, he said, but you need to yeah. get the job. I said, nope, I'm not getting it. And this apartment is not worth for me to fight for. Yeah. It's like, I was very old and you know it was a no I, I didn't want to move in to begin with and yeah. uh, if on top of it I had to get the job it's like no this is all like part of your the tests that we all face on almost a daily basis isn't it yes that we're, all, we're all tested at one point or another and then as you said you staying in your truth that ended up actually getting you out of, in a way, that predicament by staying in your truth. You've manifested yourself the place that you needed and you re you required. Right. You required that nice safe place for you. So by actually staying in your truth. 
Well, standing in my, in my truth meant that I was, I was in my car longer. Yeah. But at that time, it got me question myself. It's like, did I do, do the maybe, right thing? Do you think maybe though that, that whole process has led you to a point now where you're better capable to foresee that it's you that is learnt, that is kind of creating manifest. my reality? Yeah, it's you that is creating your own reality, and it's like it's giving you the proof that by know thyself. The old adage is literally what you the process that you're talking about and that you've gone through and now you're coming out the end of it so by like you say you went up on the stage and you've literally said what you were thinking and what you are that headache went away so that was the release of all that built-up energy like you said and that the know thyself adage is literally the internal work that we all face now it's a very ambiguous statement saying know thyself isn't it and the internal work they're very like well what does that mean and that's what i love about your channel and what you do you're one of the only people i've seen that actually goes on youtube and is actually trying to explain to people what that process is the internal work um you call it standing in your truth living in your truth some people call call it walking the walk. Um, that's the one I choose, walking the walk. Um, yes, because so I, there is a difference between knowing the path and walking yeah. the path. Yeah, and you it's know? a key. Is through my studies and my own experiences, my own journey, I've learned that the key is self-observation. To observe your thought patterns, to observe what you're thinking now is that my ego guiding me or is that like my higher self is that me thinking uh, is my ego trying to survive or is it me actually trying to do the right thing here mm -hmm. and then as you were saying over time of self-observation you get to the point where you ended up with those people with the plug socket incident where you're learning the compassion the kindness the forgiveness the understanding to realize that we're all the same where we start off it's our, the path that we've taken down through life and that ends us up leading to where we are. And we all go through different journeys in life, so no one can judge or should judge another because you don't know the journey that they've come from. Mm -hmm. So, like the old thing, like Satan is the word originally, the very original word, as I know you know, Satan means accuser. So if you're being a Satan, you're accusing that person in your own mind. You may not be saying it out loud to them, but you are being that person's accuser in your mind and you come to the stage now where you understand, comprehend, understand, however you want to say it, that it's you that's doing that to them. And then you, you're learning not to do that. Right. Oh, yeah. Be because my judgment towards them has a, a frequency and obviously is harming them even though i'm not and yourself yeah and even though i'm not uh physically doing anything to them or verbally uh, with my thoughts if i oh that jerk uh, uh, I, yeah. you know could yeah. go on and on and on but in the meantime that energy is arming them even yeah. if we don't see it and yeah. it's harming me because I'm building up resentment in my heart and I'm the one suffering from that re resentment. Yeah. Therefore, uh, that, that, that's where I say you must choose what, how you feel about everything. Yeah. <laughs> and anytime I, I feel triggered, uh, resentment, resentful, or you know, sad, or I look at myself and I'm like, why do I feel like that? Why do I choose to feel like that towards this situation? Yeah. And if I'm not pleased about how I feel and I want to feel otherwise, I need to change my perspective on the situation. So I'm talking about that like it's easy 
and it's no. far from being true. It is not easy. It's extremely but, difficult to start with, but it does get easier over time. Yes, it gets easier over time. But the thing I keep in mind all the time is I want to be the change I want to see, you know? Yeah. So I don't want to be judged. I try, and I say I try not to judge because I do at times I cut myself being judgmental towards other people and yeah. I cut myself but then I bring myself back to the right place I need to be yeah. you know to to not harm them with my thoughts and not harm myself also you know and yeah. to put myself in a situation where I will be truly and honestly be able to exercise compassion mm -hmm. now forgiveness is not forgetting exactly you don't forget otherwise well you don't forget different thing as i was homeless i made some video and somebody i knew from a long time ago came yeah. to my channel and sent me an email and says, Carol, what the fuck? Homeless? What? Yeah. So, um, that person raised up some question and I answered with honesty and I've never got any feedback back from that person. Really? So, you know, I was I, I, I was thinking maybe that person was not completely truthful with me, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. But whatever the reason was, it is what it is. And, you know, I'm dedicated and focusing into practicing living in the now, living in the love, and yeah. be aware of all of my thoughts and decide, okay, that thought, I don't like it. And it's not mm -hmm. for me. What led me to think such a thing? And yeah. sometimes I have some weird thoughts coming to my mind. Like, I would go outside and like just crossing the street for example and then all of a sudden i'm just thinking oh a car will come really fast and hit me it's like yeah where the hell that come from yeah and that happened to me a lot more since i started to observe my talk right and yeah. um, since I started to observe my thought, when I see thoughts like that, I feel like I don't want to think stuff like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because in the meantime, what we think become reality. Exactly, yeah. It's like all my dream catcher that I do, I think of them before I make them. Yeah. When they're in my head, they all build up in the right color with the right beads and everything. You know, yeah. it's it's already set. It's in my head. So Yeah, you just go bring it out. So that's how we create reality. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult when you need to apply that into uh, financial or housing or relationship, no matter what yeah. it is, you know. Yeah. And, um, but, it, and it's a truth that it's not easy to come around. No, at all. Life doesn't happen to us. We create life. We create reality yeah. by 
what we are holding on very close to has like some touch goals or emotion right it's like how many times I've heard of people getting cancer you know and then they realize that they had some issue that they haven't coped with and yeah. all that they've done was to accumulate resentment yeah. and to live into that all the time ended up creating cancer and Do you know what I feel that that's true um, no I've lost over 15 members of my family to cancer um, my mother was the last one and um, I'm pretty sure that it goes along the lines of I can never get his name right that Japanese doctor Masamoto yeah something he did the rice experiment with the water he, he, I, I, I did the he, rice experiment myself there's I did it as well um, and yeah it's true isn't it it does work you think loving thoughts to the one is nice you think nothing to the other one and it's just stagnate you think the horrible stuff to the other one and it goes nasty so like when we were talking about those people and your judgments towards them that effect is having on your water in your body mm. to a minor extent it's rearranging and restructuring the water molecules in your body <clears throat> so as you said if you're harboring that resentment within you for years and years and years it's going to literally restructure the water molecules in your body to create what I feel is what we call cancer. So I 100% agree with you on that. Right. So like you say, hopefully we should never get it. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, touch wood. <laughs> yeah. So next question. Okie dokie. Um, with the focusing on our own thoughts and what have you, living in the now, living in the moment, um, for me, it's like I say, it's all, I call it the old time. But everything's happening all right now, it's just that we can't perceive that, so we space it all out. Um, I'm not, a, I, the way I see it is that we don't always have to be happy. I remember seeing the one video that you did where you were trying to explain that, uh, you know, you're trying to shift your focus from being frightened. Obviously, we don't. That, as you said, that's a choice that we end up choosing the fear. Um, hard to comprehend it at that time and then shift yourself out of it. Um, but from where I stand, it's like that we don't always have to be happy, joyful, blissful. We don't have to live in that permanent state. It's great if we can. Where I kind of hold it, I use my pendulum technique mentally to try and keep it neutral so that I can choose to go into the happy, the joyful, the bliss if I need to if for whatever reason I can't imagine why I would want to but if I wanted to swing it the other way I can also do that as well so for me personally I, I don't think it's a case of having to permanently be happy it's okay to just be neutral um, when you are in this process of uh, being homeless both times did you find that there was anything that kind of helped you to stay either neutral or bring your vibration up rather than staying in that fear what's going to happen next kind of mindset or did we not something in particular but it it, it it's is not, like a technique we don't technique have to excuse me is there a, like something that you used you could ha give to other people that they might be able to use to help them in similar situations? Help other people. I have um, a very um, specific uh, point of view on that. Is that you cannot help someone that doesn't want to help themselves to begin with. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Now, if someone else come to me and ask for help, doesn't mean I'm gonna be able to provide them with what they want. <coughs> and what I have to offer might not fit their needs, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not because somebody come to me and ask for help that necessarily mean I can do that. Now, um, when that happened, 
it, it's true, it's impossible to constantly be happy. It's impossible. Yeah. But let's say a situation like that would happen. Somebody come to me for help and I can't provide them with the help they want. Yeah. I will propose them some what I can provide with. And if they want it, good. If they don't, it's sad, but it is like that. So yes, I will feel I will feel sadness. And when I do feel emotions like that, I will ask myself, why do I feel this way? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you next. Do you feel that it's your own feelings, emotions, or is it something else kind of projecting onto you to make you feel that way? Well, you know, since I've, I've moved here, I've been trying to give back what I've received from some yeah. organization. And when you're waiting in the line for their services, they're saying, well, we don't have enough volunteer. But here I am and I want to volunteer and you refuse it. Really? So that made me sad, you know. Understandable, you want to help him. Yeah. And I just want to give back what I have received, you know. It's, um, so it made me sad. And uh, I don't know if you would qualify that as other projecting on me or what, but I allow myself to feel that sadness. It's okay to feel sad when you are rejected. And in the meantime, I am so busy these days. Like when I moved here, November 1st, the first week was all about moving my stuff in here. And it took me all week to move all my stuff all the way up to the last floor. And like I have my big bucket, my dishes, it's all Pyrex and it's yeah. freaking heavy. It was one step at the time. It's like boom, yeah. boom, just one step <laughs> at the time. And it took me literally all week. It's like my computer it desk. Help you. <laughs> no, I did it all alone. So, you know, I would go to the storage, fill up my car, come here. I would do like two, three, two or three trip a day, depends on how light or heavy the stuff was <laughs> and yeah. you know it's not because I can load my car at once because I have a, tr <laughs> a, a, a buggy over there I can carry a whole bunch fill yeah. up my car and I, there's an elevator over there so yeah. I'm on flat surface so it's easy to load my car but unload I have to take each item and each box and bring it yeah. up here and when it's yeah. heavy I, I don't have an elevator here so I have to go up and down the stairs do you feel that any good things happened to you during the time that you were homeless well of course I was not crying all the time I had very good moments and there's one in particular I want to share with you all is that uh, well, Patrick's been my rock, you know, uh, since we started talking with the planet, we became very close, very quick, and yeah. during those seven months, we kept in touch every day, and at one point, I went to get my meal at Humanity Project, my supper time, and it was a very good meal, it was a chicken nougat, and I was using my uh, my hand to eat that, but everywhere we go nowadays, we have to sanitize our hands and wear the mask. And yeah. so I, I sanitized my hand so many times during those days. Yeah. Every time I would go out in my car and come back, and uh, so I was 
in whereby with Patrick and I was eating my meal and um, and all of a sudden you know when you eat with your hands you tend to lick your finger Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so I lick my finger and I'm like very seriously <laughs> hmm sanitizer and mm. Patrick laugh and we had such a laugh about that it's like you know <laughs> even when you are in your worst there is good moment that you have to um, keep very close in your heart for the hard time right mm. that it's not all black yeah and it's not all white there is grace too but yeah. You know, it's you have to hold on to those little moments when you are out of your comfort zone. You yeah. know, to remind yourself that the world is not as terrible as some want to make you feel it is. Yeah. Um, I feel nowadays it's um, we are in the war and the enemy attack us with fear yeah. so the more we fear the more we give in to them right. so when you are when I am caught up into fear which happened less frequently even when I was homeless it yeah. would happen less frequently that I would feel like it would be easy it was always uh, uh, something difficult to go to sleep at night where do you okay. park where can you be yeah. safe yeah and I would settle for a place just before to go to bed if I feel safe in the now I'll be safe all night yeah. If I don't feel safe in the now, I go park somewhere else. And, you know, when when you are homeless, even though you have a car, you, you hang out with the people who are homeless. You go to the same place where the people, are, where the homeless go feed themselves, have their shower. Yeah. And, and stuff like that so my car has been spotted and at the end before like the last month that I was living in my car there were two guys that I started seeing pretty much almost everywhere I would go yeah. so I knew that my car was spotted and mm -hmm. I was carrying all my electronics, my laptop, my cell phone, in my car and all this and that. I didn't want them to come at during the time I was going to be sleeping. Just, yeah. you know, those thought I, that was fear. So, That's not you know, yeah. how I would decide where I park is if I don't have those thoughts in my head just before to go to bed I'm good that's where I'm gonna park for the night I feel you I feel you absolutely accurate there yeah yeah so that's that, but that, that's kind of where I came into living in the moment as a young teen like I moved out at an early age from my home uh, I was living home but I just wanted to get out and see the world and be independent so I moved out and as a young person no job I couldn't afford to pay my bills and I'd always seen my mother stress out her whole life about bills and I made the conscious decision that what's the point in stressing out about the bills? I haven't got the money to pay for it until X date. There's no point in worrying about it for the next two weeks. I'll worry about it on the day I get my money and then I'll figure it out. So that's spot on for what you just said, that living in the now, living in the moment, am I okay in this moment? Yes, I am. There's nothing to worry about. That's right. So just treat every moment, every new now that way, and then you're a lot happier inside. You're a lot more centered. And as you said, you knew you were safe there, so you were safe there. 
it doesn't mean that living in the now and not worrying about tomorrow to be an idiot like for an instance there, uh, there were a problem with my landlord. She didn't took the, my banking account correctly, the number correctly. Yeah. So the money is still in my account. Yeah. Now uh, we solved that. So now she's got the right number. So yeah. the money should, the, the payment should go through. Yeah. It doesn't mean, you know, living in the now and not worry about tomorrow. To, uh, to do stupid stuff like if I go and spend that money then I would be in trouble because my rent yeah. wouldn't go through and yeah. yes that's something to worry about if you do action like that yeah. but you know the fact that I, I'm being responsible and I let the money where it, it it's supposed to be and yeah, still got to play in the rules. When, yeah, yeah, still playing the rules. So when the money, when the payment's going to go through my account, the money is going to be there and everybody's going to be happy and I'm going to yeah. remain in my apartment. And for as long as I do that, there won't yeah. be any problem. Why should I worry about that? You know? Yeah, exactly. The ones generally that I see, and it kind of goes in line with the creating as you're going along sort of thing, is the ones that worry about being run over when they're crossing a road. The ones mm -hmm. that are worrying about financial hardship. You're thinking of those things, you're manifesting them, so it will, sooner or later, come into your existence. That's right. So, like it's, you say, staying in that now and then. It's just like my mother, she used to, to be really frightened about but and she was a mo the smoker in the house and yeah. she would fear very deeply that if you don't put up your cigarette correctly you could cut on fire and at yeah. that time we would empty the cigarette butts in the garbage bin and yeah. she would worry really uh, very much about the house cutting on fire and she worried about that for years without cutting on fire yeah. until the day she did get caught mm. on fire from a cigarette butt in the yeah. garbage bin Ta -da. <laughs> it finally happened took a long time but it finally happened so, you know, it's, it, it also depends with the intensity that you put, the, the amount yeah. of energy you put in a thought, you know, yeah. that will depend on how fast it will create. In the meantime, uh, we're not isolated. We live in the world with m many, right? Yeah and it, it's many perspective and we all need each other now for me to get this place i had to go for resources now, everybody knew all the resources knew i needed a place and i, I was doing all that i can yeah to actually find a place and i was provided with a program didn't work out with that but it worked out here so I'm very thankful that I stood in my truth that day where the landlord uh, had me choose yeah. the job or homeless yeah so I choose homeless and I I really question myself did I do the right thing like if I would accept the job, I'd be in that apartment. But I'm glad I didn't accept the job because here I am. Yeah. It, it is much, much better yeah. than that apartment that was offered to me that I would have uh, had to take the job for. Kind of like your reward for passing the tests that you've been through. Yes, passing the tests. 
And like, so I think that we're in, like they, people have said for a long time, the Hopi Indians and what have you, the, this time we're now is a time of testing. We're all being tested one way or another. Yes. That, as, you know, as, as you know, I went through a, not similar, but I've been through a heavy process myself over the last yes. six months, getting separated from my wife for 15 years. And I easily could have descended to, uh, and spiraled into a really bad place. But I, through luckily all these years of training, as it were, it's come to the point that where I'm at now, I left and I kept my mind positive and my life now is it's a slow incline, but it is definitely progressing in the right direction because I'm keeping my thought patterns positive. Right. Just like you, I've ended up with a really nice place where I feel safe and happy and secure. Um, so I feel I've, I passed my tests and I was rewarded. Yes. But then <laughs> once we get reward, we need to not forget where we come from. Exactly. To not lose the comfort zone <laughs> again, yeah. right? Because yeah. Yeah. we can lose it again. Yeah. I don't want to create that, but and it is true. It, it, I've came to realize that, and and that's what I don't want to lose. That's why I want to share with you on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, you know how your thoughts, our thoughts create an emotion and the emotion is what's vibrate out and mm -hmm. it's been captured by others in the universe and create yeah. reality yeah. so what you put out there so it's not easy to just send love I'm not that kind of person to just <laughs> okay <laughs> You yeah. know, I send my love to everywhere, which we should yeah. do, but I'm not there. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's not an easy thing, but as you grow your comprehension so. of how, of who you are, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. how you think, when you, just observing our Changes. thoughts, that's... Cha your thought patterns change totally, don't they? just to observe without judgment your own yeah. thoughts yeah that's difficult because we are right. our worst judgmental yeah. people we judge yeah. ourselves before others does you know it's like oh what people are going to think yeah. of my hair oh what people are going to think of my glasses oh what people are going to think of 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 what One do of the i think I don't have a mirror <laughs> <laughs> right so what do I think about myself is the most important because yeah. what I think of myself is going to become what other think of me yeah right so yeah. how can I be trusted if I can't trust myself yeah. how can yeah. I be loved if I don't love myself yeah you know, it all start with ourselves. That's why it's so important to have an honest and truthful observation of your own self, of yeah, your own really action. Yeah. So that's that's the first step. And no, that's the second step step. Because the very first step of all that we need to do is to be willing to change mm -hmm. okay. to want to change yeah. when you want to change that's when the work begins yeah and it's not easy it's not gonna be easy and for most people you know it's like when I listen to somebody story and it says it took me 22 years before I get to this. I'm like, I'm not a monk. I'm, not, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna yeah. meditate for 22 years to get to that. Can I learn differently, faster, maybe? Yeah. So I remember before 
I became homeless the very first time. I was yeah. when I was doing talking with the planet with Patrick. I was yeah. thinking, I want a crash course. I want you know, <laughs> yeah. quick yeah. and rapidly, yeah. and I like will never ask that, that again. <laughs> <laughs> I will I never. Don't blame you. I will yeah. never because you don't know the form it's gonna come to you. Exactly. And I wanted a crash course, and I got it. I became homeless twice. And it's Defensive not because uh, I was a troublemaker, or I wasn't paying my rent, or anything like that. The first time, yeah. my basement got flooded, and I had to move out. The second time, work stopped, so I had to move out. Um, yeah. It just happened like that. It, it's not that I was not taking good care of that lady. I was taking good care of her, but she had dementia. Yeah. And she had that, that for worked. years. And it just happened that it got worse as I was there. That put the family into the position that they kind of delayed to do is to have her in a nursing home because they were trying to keep her in her house for as long as possible. As you did, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, but when it got to the point where it needed like 24-7 uh, awareness of care, yeah. like yeah. in the beginning I would go to sleep and she would sleep all night, no problem. She would get up to go for a wee, it would wake me up, I would hear it. Yeah. that she would go back to bed. When she started to get up multiple times and wandering around drinking milk, I didn't want to be responsible for the day she wandered on the street. You know? I understand, yeah, yeah. When I know there is chances it's going to happen, you know, so... Yeah. It is what it is. It's like I couldn't, and to be honest with my own self, I couldn't provide her with what she needed was uh, professional care. Yeah. Professional care. Nobody can, not 24 care. hours a day. It's, it's, you can't. You've got your own life to live as well, even if you are employed doing that, aren't you? Well, so I was employed there. <laughs> to be 24 seven or caregiver, yeah. but at night- You go to sleep. <laughs> I go to sleep, I you need to, to sleep. sleep, and I'm up in the morning, and she get up in the morning, and we go through the day, and uh, you know, I, I take care of her through the day, and, and the story repeats itself day after day, every day of the week, so, but then it comes to a point where one person is just not enough. Yeah. And I can't stay up all night just in case she get up for milk or, she, yeah. you know, or she decide for, and it was dangerous too. <coughs> like at the end, I was, I would turn off the breaker of the stove just to make sure that if she go plays with the stove, yeah. she won't. <laughs> That's cut on fire, you know? Yeah, good idea, yeah. So, when you start doing stuff like that, then you start living in fear. So I had to be on this again. So you, yeah, exactly. So you, you basically, you were catapulted <laughs> into your into that part of your journey, really. Yeah. It? It, was like, it, was, it was the rapid growth that you asked for. Yeah, but now yeah. I'm okay. I can learn slow. <laughs> <laughs> so put the brakes on now. Slow it down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was um, a rapid growth, but uh, it's like I, I don't want you. that no more. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I can comprehend whoever want a rapid growth. Yeah, don't ask for it. Think twice <laughs> after yeah. listening to this. Think twice. Be, ver be very careful what you ask for because you will get it one way or another. Yes, that's that is so true. 
So it make me wonder, what should I wish for? Um, what do I need to wish for when I, all I need is to live in the now and be happy and appreciative of the now and even living living in my car being homeless it, I had still had stuff to be appreciative of yeah. I had my car I had my laptop I still had all my people that I I hang out with you know and yeah, uh, that I talked to that has been and people on YouTube has been very cheerful with me and very comprehensive and helpful and with you know yeah. some comments under the video either on the grass legacy or on my channel they, they were very how can I say it cheerful yeah yeah. you know encouraging and and thank you everybody for all that you've done for me and now it's time for me to give back well that's the good thing about this like you said that now you're in your comfortable space it's very important not to forget and I think the best way to do that the way I'm doing it is that I've kind of been through these processes as well in my journey and now I'm coming to the point where I feel I'm capable of being able to teach these things so the same as yourself you you're giving everybody examples on your YouTube channel I think it's very important that when we do reach this comfortable space that we're in we may be looking up to the stars thinking we you know we're going somewhere but it's also very important to look down to reach a hand down to try and help those up with us so I think you're amazing Caroline. and by looking down reaching a hand you won't grab any hand you will grab the hand that will grab you back exactly yeah for the one that wants to come up right yeah. because yeah. if you try to grab anyone else hand they will just drag you down yeah and also it's not good for you to try and impose something on somebody else that they don't want themselves no um i i've been guilty of that myself if anybody many of my work colleagues ever see this they'll testify to that i can stand in work and i'll give a three-hour lecture on something you know maybe something like this topic but those people in their journey they're not ready to hear it so they just cut, cut off and what have you there may be the one person that is ready to hear it but i think it's also important not to try and force it on someone if they're no. ready, they'll find you or you'll find them. The time, their synchronicity will make it happen in the right time for them. That's right. <laughs> That's so, right. Um, yeah. So by putting it out there on YouTube, it's there, it's available, it's free. Yeah. There's no commercial because I'm not big enough. <laughs> 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 and when I'll be big enough, I hope I'll be able to disable commercial because I don't want I any monetize this either. <laughs> monetization on my channels nah I have other I goals turn mine off. I never make enough <laughs> <laughs> well who knows we never know yeah I'm not in it for the money anyway just as you I'm in it for the love I just want to share that's it and it's not my goal to become uh, to to have a plate for a hundred thousand subscriber, a million subscriber. Yeah. It's not my goal. My goal, what, what I'm working on right now, as you can see, you this dream that. catcher right there, I just finished it. That's for uh, Sabrina at you all. I'm going to deliver uh, Wednesday this dream catcher to her because she's been so helpful to for me during yeah. my the, the, the time I was homeless and a client of the storage and there were time where I was in my storage uh, doing my things and she would come through like doing her things like checking 
whatever and you know she had to go through the aisle and do what she had to do yeah. and sometimes she would just stop like five ten fifteen minutes and we would have a chat and there were time where I would be crying and oh. she, she listened to me and that was very very um it's not always easy to find somebody to talk to and you know let yeah. go of your true thoughts your true fear and you know just to share it to have it out your chest so you can let some pressure out and yeah. you know so and yeah when i went back after i moved here I went back to see her. I said, you remember I told you I would make a dream catcher for you? She's like, yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah. So I told her and even after I moved out, she kept on help me, helping me because sometimes because. there's people that they leave and they leave stuff behind and I still yeah. need a kitchen table and I still need a, a mattress. Well, I might not get it. Might not accept a mattress from the storage because we never know yeah but i Fair still enough. need a, a double mattress a kitchen table and i needed a a, a vacuum did you, and she had did you get your shower curtain i did <laughs> i bought it at walmart 15 dollars <laughs> and i'm enjoying it every time i go well that's curtain shower let's talk about it now this is the process <laughs> you know this is the process yeah, yeah. i want to talk the, how how do you evolve how do you work on yourself on a daily basis for everything yeah. now the curtain i bought was the cheapest and i went for the cheapest yeah but i wanted material but it's not just material because why do I want it material? Because yeah. once it's wet, it's heavy, and it stick to the top instead of, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, oh, so, I know those ones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one is kind of light material on one side and plastic on the other. Plastic. But it's very, very, very light. And yeah. when I have my shower, the wind push it on me, and that annoys me. Yeah, it's horrible, isn't it, yeah. So, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about now, is, is how do I work on myself, it's that when the curtain annoy me, yeah. it's like, okay, calm down, Carolyn, and appreciate this curtain to yeah. be annoying you. Why should I feel like that? Why should I choose to feel appreciative of the curtain? Yeah. yeah, because I remember not long ago, there were no no sign of a shower. And, yeah. you know, I had to make yeah. an appointment to have a shower. Yeah. Now that I'm here, I can just go and have a shower whenever I need, whenever I want, whenever I feel like it. Yeah. No appointment necessary. So, um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's how I work on myself. It's like when I get triggered with, that's the way to do it. with, with yeah. things like that, you know, we like things our ways and well, I, I like to have my shower and not fight with the curtain that's, you know. Yeah, you, you don't <laughs> feel like you're being attacked at the same time, do you? Yeah. <laughs> so... <clears throat> You know, that's how I work on my thoughts. And yeah. by doing so, I am convinced I am raising my frequency. And okay. I do feel better because, you know, if I wouldn't work on myself, on my thoughts of the, that curtain, yeah. you know, it, it's like I would, well, I would just create resentment and... Yeah. And it, it would just build up and it would get to the point where I may create an accident in my shower, you know? Possible, it's possible, yeah. Fighting yes. with that curtain. Yeah. But, you know, it's, I've came to the point where 
I kind of talked to my curtain, and now I'm going to sound crazy. <laughs> we all sound crazy in this field. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I sent you love. I know you love me, and I know you want to hug me, but please <laughs> wait till I'm done washing myself. <laughs> and I okay. don't know, but the curtain kind of stuck. Yeah, coming on me stuff. i don't know that is that crazy or not no 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 do not i do I, magic I, or what yes it's, you did <laughs> so th that's that's how it happened and i can't believe i'm telling this story here but it, you know <laughs> i've done when very I similar do that, things myself what i've done i've done very similar things myself like but what? you repro you reprogramming yourself you're unprogramming from all the lies you've been told your whole life and you're reprogramming your mind so that your neurons or what have you they're all work in a different way um, right. so like say for example let me think of an example I know I've had loads and loads of examples of this kind of thing happening where I'm realizing what is me and I'm changing it um, in my work for example where I work, I've got uh, basically a giant vacuum cleaner in front of me that I have to throw plastic bags at. I don't need to explain any more of that, really. Um, with these plastic bags, they come from rubbish, from recycling. You can have all sorts of things attached to them. So every now and again, the person working opposite me will accidentally put one up with something stuck on it, and it'll get shot straight at me instead of going up. The bag will go up, but whatever's attached to the bag very often goes straight across the conveyor belt and hits the other person. I got fed up of this, as you can imagine. <laughs> For the last five months since I became aware of my thought pattern, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, you're hitting me all the time, to, like, saying to the other person, be careful, blah, blah, blah. Instead of that, I've now changed my thought pattern to, okay, well, when this does happen, I'm going to block it. Or it's not going to hit me. It's not, these things aren't going to hit me any. Now in my job, I'll be doing what I'm doing. As something starts coming over to me now, as I'm picking the one thing up and I'm putting it up there, my hand will deflect it every single time. But since I became aware of me being upset at these things hitting me, and instead of being upset at it, me changing my mindset to the fact that these things don't have to hit me, they don't anymore. I don't know if that's a good example of this or not, really, to be honest. But either they'll just miss me, or I'll deflect them so I don't get hit by them anymore. So how did you change your thought? Well, I've been, I've, I've, been, I, I, I've been on the same sort of thing as you for a long time. So I became aware that it was me thinking, I'm, you know, I'm going to get hit today. Oh, how many times am I going to get hit today? That Not dread, but you're going into work knowing that you're going to have a hard day and not plus having a hard day you're going to get covered in god knows what you know you could end up with a bean stuck to your face right or like the one time i had a thing of chicken coma explode all over my face right um so you end up going to work thinking i don't want that to happen so instead of going to work thinking i don't want that to happen i go to work thinking if anything like that is going to happen i'm going to come off better i'm right. going to i i i don't sort of so think you how kind of go right. you kind of visualize a different outcome yeah that does not create resentment at the yeah. end of the yeah. day yeah so I, I never I don't have that resentment like you say if and, anything I'm kind of grateful for the and opportunity you started manifesting you deflecting those things and, oh, I look like a Jedi I swear <laughs> I look like a Jedi now one of the guys in works actually said that Dave you're like a Jedi when you do this <laughs> like, there you go yeah, I don't, know, don't know about that but I, I've been doing Young the job for 15 soul. years <laughs> there you go yeah I don't know like I said I don't know if that's a very good example of it but yes it same, is actually another one like with my, my bathroom door it, it used to slam with the wind so I, I, I got I don't remember being resentful over my door slamming. So I asked my door again, am I going to sound crazy like yourself? I asked my door, can you please stop slamming? 
it's not because there were any wind. I don't know why he was slamming my subconscious or something, but there's no wind or anything like that. It was just like bang, bang. Like if my children are over and sleeping, it would disturb them. So I just asked the dog, can you please stop banging? Like, you know, you're doing a good job when you're closed. <laughs> you just stop going bang, 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 bang all the time, and it stopped. But again, I don't know if that's a brilliant example. It is. <laughs> it is another exa good example. It's, it's it's all those little examples that make us look a little crazy, but yeah. that's on a daily basis. That's how we do it. Yeah. And <clears throat> and it's more, uh, to me, it, it feels like it's, it's more valuable to share than just say, raise your frequency be happy and yeah. be compassionate and be grateful how do we do all those things how do yes. we get to the point of doing those things right yeah I, I think we're both on the same page where these are the things that we want to hand over to other people we want to be able to teach them the ways to do or show the examples of how to do that work like Absolutely. it's all well and good it's all well and good having lofty ideas of know thyself, internal work, change, and all that kind of stuff. But how the heck do you do it? That's right. And as you as you like to say, we're being the change that we want to see. So yeah, I I, tr I, I try to keep that in mind. You know, it's like I treat other how I want to be treated, and every time I see, like I got my bag here, I collect water bottle like that that yeah. uh, you can get five cent each and i see those dump diver and uh, i'm working on it <laughs> you know yeah because that's a big trigger for me and um one day i will give that bag to one of those dump diver but okay. I'm going to pick and choose who I will give that bag to. Fair enough. Because it's not because you are a dump diver that makes you a bad person. No. Mm -hmm. You know? But when a dump, a dump diver come to our building and leave a mess behind. It's disrespect. It, it is disrespectful and I don't feel like being generous during when I see stuff like that but I do know that I've seen other dump diver picking up the trash that other dump diver left out and put it in the so I, I'm just getting to know them yeah. because I always buy every month a 24 pack of these yeah. and uh, I'm gonna give my my bag but I'm gonna give it to the most deserving from my perspective right yeah and I bet you that person when you give them to them that will be exactly when they needed it the most that's right divine timing I believe in that divine timing yeah. now on divine timing are you doing what are you up to now have you got any plans for the future well what I am up to now is that uh, right now I just finished this stream catcher for Sabrina And at the, in the beginning, when I told her I was going to make a dream catcher for her, I told yeah. her after Will Smith dream catcher. Now, Will Smith is not done yet. It started. Yeah. I made a video about it, and I'm still at that. I haven't touched it yet. Yeah. So, my next step is going to be working on Will Smith dream catcher. And, cool. and I started looking into uh, Wix or square space I'm comparing uh, those websites in order to create my website to yeah. 
to be able to sell those stream catcher. Uh, also, I need to to be able to to pay for those uh, website because you have yeah. to pay for it, yeah. and you have to pay for the domain, and all. I'm I'm learning about all those things right now. It's yeah. a lot to learn about when you sure get to is. website. Yeah. Yeah, I had a crash course on Wix, so I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's, uh, you know, and I, I'm looking at shipping and stuff like that. It's, it, it's like, uh, yeah, uh, uh, you know, I should go to school to learn those things. But yeah, I'm learning online on the <laughs> on YouTube. There's a... Actually, yeah. somebody that does tutorial about the uh, Squarespace, and I'm liking it. But uh, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to receive some response from uh, the people from those website because I'm yeah. looking for some question. I want to know. Okay, they charge me so much every month, but when yeah. I do sell. Do I have to pay a, a percentage to them from my selling to them? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's all those little things that uh, are not obvious and uh, I'm waiting to find out. And uh, I'm waiting for those people to uh, answer me. So. I'm projecting that by March I should have my website up and running. Awesome. And I have all my Dreamcatcher package ready to ship if they sell. Really? And uh, uh, I want that's that's my goal is to have my website running selling my dream catcher online make a living out of it and right. as for will smith dream catcher yeah. i have a very uh, good idea on how i'm gonna do it i just can't disclose it right now well, that's fair enough it's top secret <laughs> it's absolutely top secret i can't reveal <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> but I'm thinking to launching my website with Will Smith Dreamcatcher and like awesome. I said the, that little part is a bit top secret I have idea well, and well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can speak for um, Karen um, Queen of Courts that we'll be able to put you on the Crystal Network website as well when you've got your um, website so we can put you on the portal there so that anybody goes on the crystal network will be able to see your website in your ways and maybe we gave you some sales through that as well so i don't know if you know i'm actually an admin on the website which is why i have to take the crash course in wix right um karen does most of it but i used to do a lot of background some of the background stuff um right. so i'm still involved in that website so i can i'm sure if i have a word with karen we'll be able to get you on there right perfect yeah Al dente. Help you <laughs> and also maybe we could when you're in when you're ready you've got the website and everything's up and running maybe we could do this again to help you raise awareness absolutely yeah. absolutely we could have another, ch have another chat would come on and we put it out there help yeah you. and uh there but before i do that i there is some dream catcher pattern that i have in my head that's been in my head for a long time yeah. And I need to bring them to reality. I need to make them. So uh, right now, what I'm up to is to finish Will Smith Dreamcatcher and then do all those Dreamcatcher that I wanted to do and then also make some cheaper Dreamcatcher. <laughs> because the more detail I put into it, the longer it takes. The longer it takes the more expensive yeah. there is, right? Yeah. yeah. It's not so much for the material, but more for the time consuming. And, okay, yeah. 
And I hope that uh, people can appreciate that when they'll see the price. <laughs> you know. Can I ask you a quick question? I've I, I've always been 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 meaning to ask you on the dream catches. I've always I, I I'm always been very interested in the, the Native American ways. Um, I've got a great friend I've made, a Native American friend who did the book I did the uh, red ten bits. Um, I was curious with the dream catches is it true that they have to be made specifically for that person you can't for it to work as it where you don't just go to like walmart and buy a dream catcher and expect it to work it has to be made with you in mind is that right well i i would say that the energy is different if yeah. if a dream catcher is made for you with the intention of being made for you, the energy is different than if you see a dream catcher you like, you are attracted to, and yeah. you buy it. You know, it, it, there's still an energy uh, exchange there, right? Yeah. If you yeah. if a dream catcher speak to you and you are attracted to it, yeah, you know, it, it has its value but it has more value if a dream catcher is made intentionally for you okay. see what i'm getting yeah Do you... makes sense it's just something I've, I've always wondered so yeah. yes you. and same for those who would ask the energy is different let's say when somebody asks me to make a dream catcher for them when I'm not inspired to yeah. and then I have to come up with an inspiration the energy is different because yeah. you ask for it I can appreciate that yeah. it's like Ruth when I made her dream catcher I didn't ask her what color she liked or whatever yeah. and I I just, I just, I was just inspired to make a dream catcher for her, and I end up making those three ring dream catcher, which is exactly the same than mine, except mine is white and her is green, and her has um, uh, peacock feathers. I remember, yeah, it's lovely that one. I remember you showing. Yeah, me. so she didn't ask me to do that dream catcher for her, and same for Patrick. He didn't ask me to do that dream catcher for him and yeah. and I made that dream catcher for him and Angie you know with both their co favorite color yeah the best I could with what I had you know so that's that's how it works I from my comprehension from my understanding you know yeah. my perception uh, now <laughs> People are saying, well, it's not a real dream catcher if it's not made of wood. There is traditional dream catcher, native, and yeah. let's say that mine are innovative. And <laughs> yes, I use glue. <laughs> Why? You'll stick it with something. <laughs> You'll stick it together with something, haven't you? Well, you know that there's nothing that breaks my heart more then a dream catcher that the sinew is breaking down mm. right or a feather <clears throat> just fly away right uh, yeah. that's because i make them that's because and i want my dream catcher to last for a long time i don't it, this i don't want my dream catcher to be broken in a couple of months or even a year. Yeah. You know, if it's used properly, which should be like any frame and stay on the wall. And yeah. you can, you know, if you put it over your bed, the thing is that the dream catcher are made to capture your nightmare. So. Yeah. When you have a lots of nightmare, you can get yourself a dream catcher. It's better if somebody make a dream catcher for you with the intention of making the dream catcher for you. But how yeah. you use it 
is that you put it over your bed, over your head, and yeah. when when you have a nightmare, you just pick it up, you shake it in the air a little bit, and yeah. it's all good. You put it back, and the nightmare is gone. That's mm -hmm. how they say, but I'm not a native. I've learned very quick how to make Dreamcatcher. I wanted yeah. to make it a business with the person who teach me and it turned out it didn't work out. So here I am doing it on my own years later. And you know with the time since I've learned how to make those Dreamcatcher till now, lots of water went under the bridge and I've perfected my heart and I'm not ashamed anymore or afraid to sell my dream catcher because it shouldn't be that awesome. I did it one summer I worked in a tippy for uh, two months yeah. 40 hours a week making dream catcher and selling them and yeah. that summer all the dream catcher I've made sold out Excellent. Compared to all the dream catcher that were in the store, yeah. all of mine sold out. Brilliant. So when I left the reserve, the only one that was not sold yet was the biggest one, but it was a, a two feet. Um, That's fair enough then. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was a, a huge <laughs> ring. Like it, there's a picture of that. I, I I got a picture of that, but it was a a two feet, a huge dream catcher. It was two feet, and it had the four collar of the medicine wheel, and Ooh. it had the uh, like, it was like my Lilith dream catcher. Yeah. Flower, a Lilith flower of life. And yeah. and instead, this one had 19 ring inside, and the one I made for the store was had 13 ring uh -huh. inside. It was similar, and okay, when when you go at the position 12 on the clock, yeah. then one had no ring, two had the ring tree had no ring so in between the ring yeah. I've managed to wave a dream catcher and wow. it looked good I'm gonna try to find it I'm so, gonna make put the, the picture in the <laughs> editing cool. this awesome. dream catcher <laughs> No, I <laughs> so, oh, so oh, well. yeah, that's what I'm up to, and uh, be patient. Mm -hmm. I'm learning, and I still have those dream catcher I want to make, and I'm gonna make them before I open my website because I want them on my website. Please, so watch this space. But the biggest spoiler I can say is that I'm hoping to. Uh, open my website with no one else but Will Smith. Ooh, that would be cool. That and will be cool. It would be cool. <laughs> I'm gonna try hard. I'm gonna that try hard. Cool. So. Awesome. We'll see how it lead me. Uh, on this, all I wanna say is Live in the now, live in the love, do not fear. Perfect. Perfect. Do you have anything you want to say? Um, pretty much just to mirror what you say. Um, the sort of place I come from is uh, stay calm, be kind if you can be kind, be loving, be caring and be courageous. There you go. So thank you YouTube, I hope it helped and Leave a comment in the comment section, and I'll see you later. Thank you, Caroline. Great Thank you, you, David. Bye-bye, <laughs> David.
free to explore Uranus all you want.